All right, TikTok, I'm just letting y'all come on in. We're going to get started with our Bible study today. I'm going to get the intro started here so we can get going. Let me make sure my microphone is the right mic, because last time, for some reason, I was not being... The microphone wasn't recorded, so let's make sure we test out this mic. Uh, testing, testing, testing. Testing, testing, testing. No, I don't want that mic. Testing, testing, testing. Testing, testing. Testing, testing, testing. There we go. All right, so we should be getting started here in a second. You know, test it, test it. Yeah, I'm just letting uh, the intro play here and then we'll get started in a minute. Get your Bibles out. We can already get started with Bible study here. So get your Bibles out. Get your Bibles out. Get your Bibles out. We don't mess around. We want to look at the scripture today. So get your Bibles out. your Bibles out. Just letting the intro play here and then we'll get started. Bible study time, Bible study time. Good morning. Oh, let me get that mic on. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. This is the minister ML Kimball coming to you live today on our broadcast on Word on the Street Talk TV. We're going to get into our Bible study today. Again, this is not for me to ask you for some kind of an offering, some kind of a tithe, some kind of a that's a scam. And that's what these guys are doing today. Everything comes into somebody trying to figure out how to get some kind of a dollar from you by wrapping it up with some scam that it's the most high. And I'm not that kind of a preacher and I'll never be that type of a preacher. So we are not, this is not about any type of a gift I want from you. This is just for you and I to look at the scripture and make sure we understand it together. Why? Because we go to church all the time. I've been in church my entire life for a lot of years. I've played on the instruments. I've preached. I've sung. I've led praise and worship. And the reality of it is when we look at the church as a whole today, the church is left in a situation where it has no power. We look at the churches as today they're dying as a breed because they're not teaching the people how to live according to what the Most High has required us to live. We go in and we listen to what somebody says and we don't even open up the scriptures ourselves. I can tell you for years, I go to church every single Sunday and the only time I opened up the Bible was when the preacher told me to on Sunday. And that's where the scam begins because you call yourself a believer, you call yourself a follower of the Most High, yet you don't even want to open up his scripture. And so what I did was over the last three years, I not only decided I'm going to take this Bible and I'm going to read it from Genesis to Revelation, and then I'm going to read it from Revelation back to Genesis, and then I'm going to do it again, and then I'm going to do it again. And as I began to do this deep study over the last three years of my life, almost four now, I began to notice the Most High began to show me there's things in this book that is left there, but you have to have a discerning spirit to catch these things. 
Kings. What am I talking about? Well, if you cruise over to the book of Joshua or 2 Samuel, there is a book mentioned by the name of Jasher. First, it's mentioned like this. Is not this written in the book of Jasher as a question? And then it's written like this, this is written in the book of Jasher, but nobody cared to sit down and say, hey, where is the book of Jasher? Don't tell me a scam. Don't tell me what your mommy and daddy said. Don't tell me that they're not canonized. Explain to me that if these books didn't matter, then why are they still mentioned in your Bible today? You don't believe me? Go to Joshua 10, 13 right now and read it. Go there right now with your own eyes and put your eyes on that verse and explain to me where the book of Jasher is. I'm going to tell you where it is. I went into a Catholic church last year with a friend of mine just so we could go in there and just to, 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 to debunk every piece of the scam that the Catholic Church is. So from the moment we walked in with the statues of Mary and the statue, it's a complete scam. But the biggest scam that I noticed when I walked in that church was when I picked up the Bibles that they had on their pews and I opened up the Bibles and I seen the book of Jasher. I seen Maccabees, I seen Jubilees, all of these books that they told you and me and us that are not canonized, don't read them and this and that happy horse scam. Why did they leave them in the Catholic Church Bibles? Go into any Catholic Church you want and go pick up their Bible and open it up and what do you know here? You're going to see a book called Jasher. And you must understand that there is a lot of information in those books. And there is a methodical reason why they took some of those books out. But you will never be able to see it unless you read it. So don't tell me that they're made up books. Don't tell me that somebody added something if you didn't sit down and read it. Because I tell you what, if you have a real spirit of the Most High, he will discern to you and connect the dots like he did for me. So I spend my time over the last three years teaching what I learned to the public that wants to hear it. Not for some scam to get on your stage. Not for you to say, hey, send me some kind of a love offering. Uh, some scam $20 name and claim it seat. No, I need to make sure as a leader that the same energy that I spent preaching the scam that was given to me by my forefathers, I've got to spend the same amount of energy waking up as many as people that want to know the absolute truth about this, this book. But you have to want to receive the truth, and you can't want to sit back and tell me, oh, the, uh, your westernized, canonized, scamified thinking of, oh, they said it wasn't canonized. Well, let's stop right here and ask who said it wasn't canonized. Who gave anybody the authorization to remove books? Is my question. Show me in scripture where the most I said, omit this and put this in. Don't give me your new test scam and try to erase everything that was already written. I can't receive it. Isaiah said, beside me there is no savior. Then where did you come up with your baby Jesus scam? Which we find out today is Caesar Borgio draft up in a scam. I don't care if you're painting white, you're painting black, blue, purple, green. The scripture says not to worship anything, image, likeness of anything at all. So if you give me any type of painting of something, I'm going against what the Most High said in the Tanakh. I know you're mad about it. I don't give a damn. It's the facts. I don't care if it's a cross you're putting on your chest. I don't care if you're worshiping Mary. I don't care if you're drinking blood. What's your, what's your, 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 your communion scam? Why? Because the scripture said don't even come near a dead body. But all of a sudden we're healing and bringing people back to life. Then why, why can't we do it today? If we have the same spirit that they told us that we had that matches this so-called scam they gave us that was raising people from the dead, then why isn't any one of these pastors raising people from the dead? 
Why can't I point out to somebody right now what happened during COVID when all of these preachers was just doing professing scams and nothing was coming to pass? Because it's a scam. Let me, I got news for you. The only person that can turn your lights off is the Most High who gave you life. So you better believe you can scream your savior all day long. But if he said there is no savior and you're not obeying his commands, I don't care what you think the savior is going to do for you. You're going to woe unto you when you wake up and realize, wait a minute, I was scammed. I was scammed. The scripture is clear. We can't erase what the prophet Isaiah wrote. Are you going to tell me everything he wrote? He was writing about Jesus. Well, then why did he say besides me, there is no savior? Explain that to me like I'm a two-year-old. He goes on and he says it several times through the prophet Isaiah. Go to the book of Isaiah and type in savior and just look at how many times he clarifies and identifies and says himself, I am your savior. I gave you life. I delivered you from Egypt. Jesus wasn't even born yet, so don't tell me that he's talking about Jesus if he said, I delivered you from Egypt. Don't give me the scam. I'm not here for your happy horse scam anymore. And my job, this is why the enemy hates me so much and attacks me so much, because he hates that I'm going and undoing this scam. Every day, if I wake up one person a day, the scripture says they're rejoicing up there. And so I'm doing my job as a leader and not asking for nothing in return, just your attention. But today we're not going to get into the books that they took out. I want to deal with something that a friend of mine gave me yesterday. I was in a bad, bad, bad mood and a good friend of mine spoke into my spirit right when I needed it. Now, here's what I need you to understand. Although I'm a leader and I can recite certain things to people right when they need to hear it, but it's never it, it, when you're in a situation yourself and you don't hear that same assurance from another from somebody else, you're relying on this. But you're not you you, you 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 as a leader, you feel sometimes you need to have somebody pour into you. Now, the problem is I can't receive from everybody because I know how much I've studied. And if you give me any form of a scam, I won't let you in here. So the problem with that is I'm very standoffish on what I will receive into my spirit. But my friend yesterday took me to a scripture that I've been to before. But it spoke to me yesterday, it spoke to me throughout the night, and it's been speaking to me all day today. And so this is the scripture that the Most High has given me to give to you this morning. So get your Bibles out. I'm getting ready to share my screen with the Facebook or YouTube audience. Um, TikTok, unfortunately, you guys, I can't share the screen because I still haven't figured out how to do this thing on. Uh, it won't let me stream it that way online and um, uh, uh, uh stream guard so unfortunately that's just not going to happen but you guys can hear it get your bible out and you can follow with me but we're going to get into the book of psalm and now see what I, in my uh, tenure in church a lot of times when you hear the book of psalm that's where they go to when it's time to dance that's what i've always heard i've always been there when it's time to dance when it's time oh i bless the lord at all time you hear all of the praise and the shout music and all that stuff usually comes out of psalm somewhere but what about when you are in a situation yourself and you need the most high to speak to your spirit i'm going to the book of psalm and i'm going to the 35th chapter okay and i'm going to read this step by step and i'm going to read it line by line and then i'm going to close this thing out please don't forget to like share comment and don't forget to subscribe to the youtube channel verse one says plead my cause O yahuwah with them that strive with me fight against them that fight against me Ooh, look at that so you must understand that when you are in a battle Okay, the absolute best person that can get into that battle with you is Yahuwah. So don't get into a battle and forget 
your number one defense in that battle. And you need to have Yahuwah there because he says, fight against them that fight against me. Can you imagine the Most High fighting against you? See, we forget that it's not always about blessings when Moses said blessings or curses, life or death. Choose this day which way you're going to serve. Obey the commandments, disobey the commandments. You make the choice is what Moses said. So understand that he will fight against your enemies, but there is a prerequisite for that. See, you don't want to get into a battle and don't have his protection to fight against your enemies. That's the first thing that stood out to me. Verse 2 says, take hold of shield and buckler and stand up for my help. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Shield and buckler. Ah, take hold of shield. Imagine the Most High with a shield protecting and blocking anything that your oppressor is sending your way. Verse 3 says, draw out also the spear. Could you imagine the Most High taking a spear out on you and stop the way against them that persecute me? Say unto my soul, I am your Yeshua salvation. Verse 4 says, let them be confounded and put to shame that seek after my soul. Could you imagine when, when he says, let them be confounded, it puts me in mind of the Tower of Babel when these they were devising to do these terrible things and they were actually trying to reach up to the heavens to fight the Most High. If you, you find all this out in the book of Jasher and the books that they took out, but you'll never find it in the 66. So I really urge you to get the book of Jasher. And read it. Get the Apocrypha. I stay in the Sefer. I ain't reading out of nothing else because the Sefer gives me all those books. And I know where they belong. So I know about the Tower of Babel. He confounded them because of what they were devising to do. So in verse 4 here, he says, let them be confounded. So that's your enemies being confounded and put to shame that seek after you. Let them be turned back and brought to confusion that devise my hurt. Your help is in the most high, okay? I don't care what it may look like. I don't care what it may sound like. I don't care what may come your way. You must always remember that your help is always in him. No weapon that's formed against you will prosper, but you have to be in obedience to him. You can't just be reciting that as a scam like a lot of people do, living in sin and then saying, oh, no weapon will prosper. No, that's a lie because Moses said it will, and so did the Most High. What makes you think that you will not have any weapons in your life if you won't obey him? So don't give me that scam. That's why I have so many issues with the church today. It tells you, oh, you can do what you want to do and just repent and say, I'm sorry. Well, repent is a glorified scam because all you're turning around and doing is going back and doing the same thing and saying, I'm sorry again. Eventually, the most I saying, okay, listen, I know your lying ass is lying and you've been lying. You're still lying. You're going to lie tomorrow and you're going to lie again and you're going to keep lying. But yet they gave you this scam called repent and that's it. And you think that the most High is okay with that. Although he gave us a whole bunch of things that he's not okay with. We just somehow skate past it because somebody told you it's the Old Testament. Who did that? Do you think the Most High said separate his book and call this old and that new? Why do you think that happened? Because when they you hear the word old, you think it don't apply no more. Oh, that's old stuff. No. Where did he say that at? That's where the scam begins. It's because you can't show me where he said that at. But you want to tell me that. Stop playing these games. Let them be as shaft before the wind and let the angel of Yahuwah chase them. Oh, my goodness. Do you know he sends angels after your enemies when you are in line with him? So understand the prerequisite still remains the same. You don't get all of these benefits if you don't remain in obedience to him. Let their way be dark and slippery and let the angel of Yahuwah persecute them. Mm. For without cause have they hid for me their net in a pit, which without cause they have dug for my soul. Let destruction come upon him at un unawares, and let his net that he has hid catch himself into that very destruction. Let him fall. 
and my soul shall be joyful in Yahuwah. It shall rejoice in his salvation. All my bones shall say, Yahuwah, who is like unto you, which delivers the poor from him that is too strong for him. Yea, the poor and the needy from him that spoils him. False witnesses did rise up. They laid to my charge things that I knew not. They rewarded me evil for good to the spoiling of my soul. But as for me, when they were sick, my clothing was sackcloth. How many people have you took care of and bent over backwards for? And you get in a situation, you look up and nobody's there. I humbled my soul with fasting and my prayer returned into my own bosom. I behaved myself as though he had been my friend or brother. I bowed down heavily as one that mourns for his mother. But in my adversary, adversity, in my adversity, they rejoiced gathered themselves together. Yea, the abjects gathered themselves together against me, and I knew it not. They did tear me and ceased not. With hypocritical mockers and feasts, they gnashed upon me with their teeth. Had and I, how long will you look on? Rescue my soul from their destructions, my darling, from the lions. Have you ever felt like you in a lion's den? I will give you thanks in the great assembly. You got to come see, here's the prerequisite. See, he's asking for something from him. He's telling him, I know you're going to do all these things, but he also says that I'm going to do something for you in return. So you must understand that you must give him thanks no matter what the situation may look like, no matter how bad it may look. I don't care how it look. You better give him praise. And yesterday the enemy had me in a place to where I didn't even feel like I wanted to praise him. The Most High. I mean, he had me in a spot where I was in t almost, I was in tears, speechless, and I needed somebody to speak into my spirit. And my friend spoke right into my spirit, and she said, "Listen, when you get off the phone with me, I want you to first of all go in prayer right now, cry out to the Most High, and then I want you to read this and get it in your spirit." And then I read it, 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 and then I read it throughout the night. And the Most High was speaking to me, and, and, and I had my own plans on what I was going to do in Bible study today. And no, this is what he said to give to his people. So you got to give him thanks. I will praise you among much people. So you cannot forget that you got to give him praise. He wants his praise. Bible says he inhabits the praises of his people. So you cannot forget the part where I got life today. If I didn't get up with a million dollars in my bank account, if I didn't get up with a running car, if I didn't have lights or something was wrong financially or something happened in my family, regardless, I woke up with life. So I owe him praise regardless the Bible also further says, I will bless the Lord at all times. So it's when I'm fat, mad, when I'm hurting, when I'm sad, when I'm up, when I'm down. If you forget that prerequisite, you don't only not get what you're asking him for, but you don't get his protection. You don't get that shield. You don't get those angels. All the things that he said prior to what we just read, you lose all of that. So you've got to give him thanks and praise for what he's already done. Let not them that are in my enemies wrongfully rejoice over me. Neither let them wink with the eye that hate me without a cause. For they speak not peace, but they devise deceitful matters against them that are quiet in the land. Yeah, they opened their mouth wide against me and said, Aha, aha, or I have seen it. This you have seen, O Adonai, and I keep not silence, O Yahuwah, be not far from me. Stir up yourselves and wait to my judgment, even unto my cause, my Elohim and my Yahuwah. Judge me, O Yahuwah, according to your righteousness, and let them not rejoice over me. Let them not say in their hearts, ah, so would we have it? Let them not say we have swallowed him up. Let them be ashamed and brought to confusion together that rejoice at my hurt. Let them be clothed with the shame and dishonor that magnify themselves against me. Let them shout for joy and be glad that favor, that favor my righteous cause. Yea, let them say continually, let Yahuwah be magnified, which has pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. And my tongue shall speak of your righteousness and of your praise all day long. So again, you must realize that there is a prerequisite. Would you go to the Most High expecting him to do anything? I don't care if you want him to deliver your finances. I don't care if you want him to deliver your, your personal relationships. 
I don't care if you want him to deliver your job situation. I don't care whatever the case may be if you don't always remember that I still better give him a day just for every little thing he does. Anything. Daily bread. See, when the children of Israel were out there in the, in the wilderness, he provided them manna which was all the nutrients that they needed and they still wanted something fried. No, we want some crab leg. No, I want some ham. No, I want some shrimp. All the things he said don't do, we just want it because we want it. And then we wonder why we got the highest rates of cancer, uh, highest rates of diabetes, highest rates of uh, high blood pressure, African-American race, because we eat the most pork and uh, fat back and, and put the fat back in the greens, all that stuff. I did that before. Now I'm thankful that I woke up to what he said because he said, don't mess with it. It's not about what it tastes like. The pig can digest anything. Did you know you can give a pig a dirty diaper and he can eat the whole diaper and digest it? Give him a glass bottle. He can do that. He can also eat a human and digest it. And then you're going to tell me that his meat is safe for your body? It's not. It's the worst thing you can put in your body. It's not about being Muslim. He said in the scripture not to touch it dead at all. Dead or alive. That that animal was cursed. So that's what he said. And he never erased it. So don't come with me with the New Testament scam with Peter. Oh, he had a dream. I don't give a damn what dream he had. What did the Most High say? I don't care what he saw in his vision. The Most High never erased what he said then. It was already written. So don't come to me with something else and tell me that he said it if you can't give me no evidence of it. Listen, please like, share, comment. Don't forget to subscribe. Y'all know why I do this, man. I really, really, really put my heart and soul into this because as a leader, it is my responsibility and my duty to make sure at least somebody is getting the right stuff when it comes to the scripture and we just not wrapped up in some scam and going to church and ain't nobody got no power. The scripture is true. And that blessed me so much that I was so thankful to bring it to you all. And I'm sure it will bless you too if you just go back through it. Read it yourself again. I don't care what your situation is that you're going through in life. I want you to go back through the scripture. Go to Psalm 35 and read it just like. And take every line and apply it to your situation. And you will see that the Most High is speaking to you. And you don't need to give no damn seed offering or no love offering or some scam. Because the Most High will speak directly to your situation, your spirit, and give you that peace that surpasses all man's understanding. Again, please like, share, comment, and don't forget to subscribe. Until next time, be blessed on purpose.